In this project, we will numerically validate the data provided by the paper named Thermal Performance Analysis of Solar Parabolic Through Collector Using Nanofluid as Working Fluid. In this slide, we have extracted the figure 1 of the paper, which shows a model of solar parabolic concentrator system. In this slide, you can see that we have extracted figure 5 of the paper, which shows a graph of Nusselt number over different Reynolds. Now, in this project, we will be validating the results delineated in this graph. The present model is designed in three dimensions using design modeler software. And as for the mesh, the meshing of the model has been done using ANSYS meshing software and the mesh type is a structure. A new window will appear showing you the dominant stance of your geometry. Also under the view length, view length unit section, you can see the default geometry units which is meter in this project. Also under the scaling section, uh, uh, under the mesh was created in, you can change the settings. Uh, in order to activate the scaling factors beneath that. For example, your geometry and mesh was is designed in a software which uh, its default unit was millimeters. By activating these scaling factors, you can change this factor to your desired factors in order to set the length to the appropriate unit. Uh, also, by clicking on report quality, again in the console tab, the Fluence software will, uh, will give you the quality report for your mesh. For example, you can see the maximum aspect ratio of your mesh, uh, maximum orthogonal quality, and etc. After doing that, in the appeared window, you either can define a new material by defining its properties yourself, or you can click on Fluent Database button and then select from the available list of materials in the software. After clicking on the inlet boundary, you can see that the type of this boundary is defined to be velocity. By clicking on edit button, a new window will appear in which you can change the settings for this boundary. As for the wall boundaries, they all have the same momentum conditions. For example, they are all defined to be a stationary wall and have no slip shear condition. The only difference could be in their thermal conditions. For this boundary, you can see that the coupled thermal condition has been defined, which means that this wall is in contact with the fluid on its both sides. As for the upper section of the outer wall, you can see that the heat flux thermal condition has been defined with the value of 750 watt per meter squared. After double clicking on the residuals button, a new window will appear. In the appear window, you can see the absolute criteria for equations like continuity, x velocity, y velocity, and so on. Now, when you set the software to start the simulation, there would be error between each iteration. Now, if that error is less than this criterion, uh, it conveys the meaning that uh, that equation has reached convergence. In order to generate 2D contours, just have to right-click on the Contours button and then select New. In the appeared window, under the Contours of section, you can select your desired variable. For example, in this slide, we have selected the temperature variable. After defining the variable, we go under the surfaces section and click on our desired surfaces where we want to see our contours. For example, we have selected outlet in this case. After that, by clicking on save or display button, the software will show you the 2D contour. In this slide, you can see the temperature contour on the outlet boundary. You can easily see the temperature changes on the lower section of the outer wall where we had the higher heat flux applied in order to see a different contour just have to change the variable after that just like the previous slides you can select your desired surface and then click on save or display button in this slide you can see the velocity distribution on the outlet boundary you can easily see the fluid flow reaching the fully developed state in the appeared window, under the field variable section, we select wall fluxes and surface nozzle number. After that, we go under the surfaces section and select our main boundary where we should calculate the nozzle number. Now in this slide, you can see that we have calculated the Reynolds number based on the fluid velocity we have applied to the inlet boundary. After that, we have calculated the nozzle number in our CFT simulation and we have compared our results with the paper's results. Finally, a summary of different settings and setup that we have used in our project 
is presented to you in the slide. Obtain the mesh file and also the full training movie by purchasing this product. In this slide we have extracted the figure 1 of the paper which shows a model of solar parabolic concentrator system. Now in this project we have only modeled the middle pipe as it is subjected to different heat fluxes. Behind the tube, there is a parabolic plate that absorbs the solar radiant energy, which is responsible for absorbing the heat energy from the sun's radiation, and then reflecting it. As was mentioned earlier, in this case, only the water flowing pipe is modeled. Thus, the wall of the water pipe is divided into two parts, the upper and lower wall. The upper part of the wall is directly exposed to solar energy and receives heat in the form of heat flux from the sun's rays while the lower part of the wall is affected by the reflection energy of the parabolic absorber plates of the collector and receives the energy as a constant heat flux. In this slide you can see that we have extracted figure 5 of the paper which shows a graph of Nusselt number over different ray nodes. Now in this project we will be validating the results delineated in this graph. The present model is designed in three dimensions using Design Modeler software. The geometry of the model consists of a tube which, due to its symmetrical structure, is drawn in a semi-cylindrical shape. The tube consists of two parts, the thin outer layer of which acts as the solid wall of the tube and the inner part which acts as the fluid con conduit. The pipe has an internal diameter of 0.06 meters and a length of 2 meters, which has a thickness of 2 millimeters. And as for the mesh, the meshing of the model has been done using ANSYS meshing software, and the mesh type is a structure. The element number is equal to 1,475,000. To benefit from Mester CFD services, including simulation, consultation, and training, contact our experts via info at mestercfd.com.